Hello everybody, it is another great day at Castle Hill Country Day School and I have another lesson for you and an activity and today's lesson is about motion and once we get done learning about motion we're going to be making a car, a little car, and it's going to be powered by the wind. But before we get on to that we need to learn a few things about motion and in particular some laws that were created by a guy named Sir Isaac Newton a long time ago when he was learning about math and physics and physics is actually the study of motion and he had three very important laws and the first one states that an object that is rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion at the same speed and direction until it is stopped by a force. Now, an object at rest, such as this little ball here, is always going to be at rest unless a force is applied. And in that case, it's just my finger. And I'm going to tap it, and it moves. Now, we know that this ball can't keep going forever and ever. It's going to eventually slow down. And that is because, here on Earth, we have something called friction. Now, if we were in outer space, where there is no friction, because there is no gravity, if we were to take this ball and toss it into outer space, it would go forever and ever in the same direction and at the same speed because there's no friction. Now, I'll bet you that the astronauts give that a lot of thought when they are doing a spacewalk. And the second law of motion... What? Did you... Oh, did, I'm sorry, Smitty. I, thanks for reminding me. I forgot to let you all know that Smitty's here helped me out. And I just wants to come out and hang out. And I got Bones here, who's always a very helpful person to have around, especially when you've got a your thumb in a cast. Anyways, second law of motion states that the acceleration of an object, now acceleration is the speed of an object moving in one direction, is directly related to the magnitude of the force and the mass of that force. Now, using my handy dandy motion maker we can see the second law of motion in action. For this little demonstration I'm going to use a ping pong ball and a golf ball. They have about the same volume, the amount of space they take up, but the ping pong ball is much less dense. It has less mass than the ping pong ball. The force of the object hitting each ball is going to be the same but the distance that each travels is different because their mass is different. So I made my handy dandy motion maker out of some PVC pipe that I got from Home Depot and one of the fittings I just drilled some holes in there and used some fishing line. Now I'm going to bring the fixture back just at the end of it, let go. I'm going to do the same with the ping pong ball. Bring it back the same distance. All right. It went a lot further because there is less mass in that ball, but the force is equal to what it was when it hit the golf ball, so it went farther. Now I'm going to increase the magnitude by pulling the PVC fitting back farther and let it go. So the golf ball went farther because the magnitude was increased. Let's see what happens to the ping pong ball. That went a lot farther. Force is the same. Mass of my two objects is different. The one with less mass goes farther. One with more mass goes less far. And the third law of motion states that for every action or force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, forces work in pairs. Now, think about this the next time you sit down in a chair. Your body exerts a force going down. There has to be an equal force from the chair going up, or else that chair would fall apart. Also, if I lean back in my chair to a certain point, if I go too far, I'm going to fall over backwards because the gravity is a force that's also pulling me down. I'd like for you guys to think about that a little bit more when you're in my classroom. Now this idea of 
equal and opposite forces also applies to buoyancy. So if I take a ping pong ball and drop it into the fish tank, it floats because the upward force of the water is strong enough that it can support the ping pong ball. The ping pong ball doesn't have enough force to go down. But if I drop in this golf ball, it sinks down to the bottom. That golf ball had too much force for the buoyancy of the water. There wasn't enough buoyancy to keep it up, and it sunk. Now another important idea for us to incorporate it into our wind-powered car is the idea of work and motion. Now as I sit here and talk about work and motion, is any work really happening? No. Now I may be talking, and you may be listening, at least I hope, but we're not doing any form of work. When we get down to the basics of physics, the study of how things move, work is done when a force is applied to an object and that object moves. You have to exert a force and have something move in order for it to be work, such like that. And let's take a look at our Newton's cradle. When I pull back one of the steel balls, I'm doing work. Okay, my fingers are grasping the ball, I'm using my muscles to pull it up, and then I stop. Am I doing any work? No, but there is work waiting to happen, and we call that potential energy. But when I release the ball, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy, or energy of movement. Watch. Now the kinetic energy is transferred from one ball to the next and goes on and on and back and forth. As you see, it slowly begins to slow down and it's eventually going to stop. Well again, that is because of friction. Friction robs a system of its energy and what's really happening is when the balls hit each other, energy is created in the form of heat. And that heat is released into the air, taking energy away from the balls. Something else that's happening is that those balls are all vibrating. That's what causes the clicking sound. And that, ener that vibration also causes heat and energy to be released from the balls. And so bit by bit, it's going to come and stop and will be at rest until we exert more work and more force on our cradle. Let's do two. And this is another good example of equal and opposite reactions. I take two balls, two balls bounce off, equal and opposite. It is time to put our balloon-powered cars together. And I did a little research and went online and looked at some different ideas and tried to make a few myself. And I wasn't really happy with, you know, you needed to have uh, hot glue guns or super glue, or you needed to have scalpels and sharp stuff. And I was like, you know, let's make it really simple and make it easy and make it effective. And so I think this design is going to be one that everybody can do and everybody can be successful. So what you're going to need are these two and a half inch diameter styrofoam balls. I got these at the dollar store. I'm um, going to need some balloons, of course. Um, a little duct tape, a little regular tape, um, scissors. Um, you're going to want to have several little shish kebab skews, all right? 
Now we only need to use two, but I'll tell you why we're going to need a, a several. A pretty stiff, flexible uh, straw. Two other straws. These are going to be our, going to hold the axles to our wheels. And you're going to need a piece of cardboard that is 15 centimeters across by 28 centimeters in length. Okay, width, length. You're thinking, wait a minute, centimeters? Well, this is science and we are using the metric system. It's like, ah, oh, Mr. Roberts, come on. I need to think in inches. All right, well, if you need to think in inches, it's about six inches by 11 inches. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is put my axles in place, or actually the things that are gonna hold my axles. And I want to make sure that they are they're a couple centimeters larger on either side. And when I put them in place, I want to make sure that it is perfectly going straight across. All right, so remember, as I go through this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to reduce friction, because that's going to slow our car down, and how to make things more efficient. Now, if I got this skewed to the side a little, the wheels, my car is going to go in off in one direction. And um, that's going to increase friction. So I want to make sure that it is perfectly straight across. And, oh, I forgot to mention, I always forget Bones. Bones has helped me out again. Um, he said he likes thinking about Christmas because it makes him feel happy. And he heard that we were all stuck at home or we couldn't go out and play with each other as much as we used to. And so he just said, I'm going to put my Santa Claus hat on and just hope everybody else feels happy too. So I got my straw in place and I'm going to get some tape. This is just regular one-sided tape. I'm going to do a couple more. Do the same thing at the other end. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, I need to measure out the axles. All right, axles are the things that connect the wheels together. So I want it to be, actually I might end up using the entire skewer. All right, now why do we have several skewers? Because not every skewer is perfectly straight. All right, if I take this one and I spin it, I like this one because it stays pretty straight even though I'm spinning it around. Now this one, wow, 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 wow. Now can you imagine if I put this in my axle and it spins around, it's going to be hitting the size of the straw. Friction! Don't want friction. I put my other one in, it will spin around pretty nicely. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to examine my other ones. Okay, I think this one, this one will do. I'll get these out of here. So I have my axles, and now I'm going to get my balls and get them ready to put on. Now, the reason I'm using these balls is that they just make it much easier to make your wheels. So here's one example I saw online, one that had me making, you know, I had to cut hangers apart. And these wheels are not terribly stable. You know, I had to put extra cardboard on here and tape them. And it just, I just wasn't feeling it. And you can see, we also had to put the hole right in the very center of the cap, which I found really hard. I didn't like that, and this morning when I was running, I was thinking, what would be an easier way? So I thought, a sphere. Okay, this is one of the most stable shapes in nature, and it's awesome for making balloon-powered cars. So I'm going to take my skewer, and I'm going to try to get it as straight as possible. I'm going to push it in about halfway. Then with my other one. So now we see that this end is dull. Okay, it's not nice and sharp like the other one. And if I try to just jam it in here, I made it a hole, but it won't be as secure. So I'm gonna take my other skewer and I'm gonna make a little starter hole, go down about 
half an inch, make a little space, and then I'm going to put my axle into that straw, but it needs to go into my car first. So I'll pick this up, stick it through, find my little hole, and stick it in. Now when I push, I want to hold on to the axle, not the other ball, because if I push them like this, this one's going to keep going in further. This is hard with one hand, but I will get it. I guarantee I will get it. Okay, I can push this one in a little bit more. Okay, so there I go. Now I got my. So these are going to be much more stable. Look at that go. See, this, I didn't have to worry about putting it exactly in the center like I would have with these. All right. So there's one. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. But there, I've got some pretty good looking wheels. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it over. So there we go. And now we're ready to make our engine. And this is where I'm going to use my kind of firm straw that's bendable. Now you can use a smaller straw like this that's also bendable, but I found that trying to tape the balloon onto the smaller straw is really difficult. You could also use a larger straw. This is from a 7-Eleven, the Slurpee straw. That's a little bigger. That'll make it helpful. But I'm missing that bend here and I'll tell you why that's important in just a little bit. These came from Circle K. I just checked at Quick Trip and they've only got straight ones. So try and find one like that. Take my balloon, I'm going to stick it in and prepared a couple of pieces of duct tape. Now you could use different tape. You could try using just a regular masking or regular tape like that. But that's kind of stiff, and what I like about the duct tape is that it really will stick into the different grooves because we want to block any air that might escape out of here. So I put it off on an angle just a little bit like that, and I'm going to work up kind of in a spiral so the tape is in contact, and I'm really going to work it, fill up all those little nooks and crannies where the air might escape. Because if it escapes, it's taking our power. We don't want that. Okay, I'm going to check to make sure it works. Okay, so that's a pretty good seal. I'm happy with that. This will work. It also can be really irritating to your parents. <laughs> All right, before I put my, my engine in place, I put some duct tape here on the end. And I've done that because um, if I want to experiment with different types of engines, say I use a, a longer, a different shape balloon, or maybe even a different type of straw, if I were to keep taking it on and off of the cardboard, the cover would fall apart. And, but the duct tape works extremely well because it's a very strong surface and other bits of duct tape come off of it quite easily. So here I'm going to put my balloon in place. <clears throat> the other important reason is we have a large base here is that when the balloon expands um, it needs to sit on the, the base. All right, If your base is too small it could, get in, it could interfere with the, the balls rolling. And that is going to cause bones friction. All right, so I'm going to line this up, get it as straight as possible, put my, to tape that down. All right, let's see. Let's go see if it works. Okay, ready to give this thing a whirl. I like it! I 
I like it a lot. Now, if this table were much, much longer, my car would have gone for much, much longer than that. I want to do a really quick uh, experiment here. See the, the straw is coming off this, the back here and it's just pressing on air. So it's air being forced on air. I wonder if I were to bend my straw down so that if it's pressing, the air is going to press on the table, maybe it'll go a little faster. So this is going to be a quick little experiment. We're just going to observe with our eyes. We're not going to collect any data. Well, it looks like that went a little faster than the first time, but how can I tell? Now, I need to figure out the speed. And speed equals distance divided by time, or miles per hour, or miles divided by hours. Um, but we're probably not going to get to miles per hour with our car but we can measure feet per second. So feet divided by seconds is what we're going to be measuring. Now my challenge for all of you is to see if you can determine the speed of your balloon powered car and then maybe make a couple of adjustments and see if you can make it faster. So I'm gonna set up my track here in my classroom and we're gonna run a few experiments. Twelve point six seconds. Now I'm going to do a few more trials just to collect some more data. Okay, I have my course all set up. It is twenty-four feet long, using some old uh, science fair project boards, which are each three feet in length. And I'm going to run a couple of trials just to see how my car is working. See if I might need to make some adjustments. So here we go. Okay, I noticed a couple of things with my car when that I just did my first trial. And let's take a look together. See how that's going up and down? What do you think that's being caused by? It looks kind of fun, but it is taking energy away from my car. So that's because one of those skewers that I thought was straight is not. So I dug around a little bit and I found a really good one. So I'm gonna change that out and see how it works. Okay, I got that axle changed out. No more up and down. Okay, so I'm ready to begin my first trial and we're gonna see how fast this thing can go. Okay, we are ready to run some experiments. I've got the straw coming off the back end straight this time. I'm going to do four trials. And each time I'm going to put in four deep breaths. Okay, we want to keep everything the same each time. And I'm going to plug up the straw, put it down, and start my watch. And I'm going to time it. And when it stops, we'll measure and see how far it went. Twelve point six seconds. Now I'm going to do a few more trials just to collect some more data. Okay, I've done my four trials. Now I'm going to look at the data and figure out the speed of my car. Okay, so here is the data, stuff that we can really analyze and figure out what we what, what happened. Our first one went twenty feet six inches in a time of twelve point six seconds, and that turned out to be one point six two feet per second. Okay, the second one 
when 19 feet 4 inches in a time of 10.72 and that gave us 1.8 feet per second. And the third, 25 feet, it went off the end. That gave us a speed of 2 feet per second. And last but not least, we had 21 feet in 12.46 seconds and that gave us a speed of 1.68 feet per second. All right, this is when we would tinker around with our design and make some changes and see if we can get the speed to go a little faster. But, and I earlier said that I was gonna do that by changing the straw, the position of the straw so it was facing down on the table or whatever surface is gonna be, but I'm not. I'm gonna leave that up to you all. And I want you to see what changes you can make to your design along with the repositioning the straw. See if you can't beat any of these times that I've got. Have fun with it. And uh, I look forward to seeing some pictures. Or if you want to send video, I'll post it at my Google Classroom. So take care, everybody. And I look forward to bringing you another lesson soon. Bye.